How is it going guys? Drew Peacock here back with another video and today we're going to be drilling some holes into the Mark IV Supra and, and this is going to achieve us to go to a much higher speed and let me just explain the logics behind it. It's pretty brilliant. I came up with it myself. Think about it. Swiss cheese. Much more aerodynamic and much easier to cut through the air because it has holes. American cheese? Not so well. Think of this as American cheese right here. No holes in it. We add a couple holes throughout it and it'll just glide right through the air. All jokes aside, we are cutting holes, but not for that reason. We are trying to see just how fast this car can go. I wanna hit 200 miles an hour. Sounds stupid. I don't know if the gearing can handle it. I'm gonna do some math probably after this video, but the goal is to get the car as fast as possible. And the way to do that, the safest way possible, is we're gonna be going to an airstrip event. We're going to an airstrip event. I believe it's hosted by Shift Sector or it's called Shift Sector. I'm not sure, it's not sponsored, so. I don't care if I get the name wrong, quite frankly. But pretty much, I'm sure you guys have seen clips of cars running on the airstrip, half mile strip, just boom, just flying as fast as they can. And uh, so we are taking the Supra on Friday to one of those events. Now in this video, we're gonna be getting the car ready for that event. And one of the things we do have to do is drill some holes. But when we get there, I'll explain what we're drilling the holes for. You guys will see, it'll make a whole lot of sense. But we have to do pre-racing inspection. A lot of people skip out on this, and I actually skipped out on doing this myself on the McLaren when I took it to the track for the first time. By the way, I know the McLaren's not here, but it'll be back and it's, it's gonna be better than ever. But yes, I actually messed up and didn't do it, and I was limited to the number of runs I could do because the car's tires were smoked. And I didn't know that because uh, from the outside, they looked fine, you know? I was like, oh, I got plenty of tread, look at that, you know? But on the inside, completely different story, worn to the cord, it was super sketch. Anyway, so today we're gonna do a pre-race inspection on the car. We're gonna be utilizing these new quick jacks from Ben Pack. They sent me these to make my life a whole lot easier. I have them mounted to the wall and they're really slim, store really easily and make your life a whole lot easier. And I'm gonna show you guys that. But yes, today we're gonna be using the quick jacks. If you guys are interested, I will link them down below. But that is not the sponsor of today's video. Today's video is sponsored by the one and only Simply Carbon Fiber. This video is sponsored by Simply Carbon Fiber. By now, if you haven't bought Simply Carbon Fiber, I, what are you doing here? You're missing out. But thankfully, Simply Carbon Fiber has you covered. Right now, they're having their post-holiday sale up to 30% off across their entire website. You guys seriously need to quit sleeping on Simply Carbon Fiber and pick some up. Like, look at this. Their carbon fiber is beautiful. It's like you're carrying around a beautiful car part in your pocket. So if you're ever feeling lonely, like you're too far away from your car, you could take a little piece with you. Right here, I have their carbon fiber phone case, which I've been using for a while, and it still looks brand new. They have other carbon fiber products, such as sunglasses, watches, wallets, anything like that. Go check them out. I'm sure they have something for you. I don't think carbon fiber will ever go out of style, so you never have to worry about your phone case or wallet or anything looking outdated, because carbon fiber is just cool, and it always will be. Anyways, guys, go pick up some carbon fiber. Use the link down below. Thank you, Simply Carbon Fiber, for sponsoring this video. Anyways, back to the pre-race inspection. So the first thing that I would recommend you do if you're going to the track, and this is just a given, and it knocks off a lot of things that you don't have to do yourself anymore, but that's getting alignment. I already went. There's no point in filming it. Not an interesting experience, but I already went and got an alignment. We got the rear camber fixed a little bit. Took a degree about, took about one degree out of the rear. We got the front nice and straightened out. It just feels super smooth now at highway speeds. If you're driving and your steering wheel is vibrating, well, that's at 60 miles an hour. Imagine it at 160, 180, or 200. Your fucking steering wheel is gonna be vibrating more than your mom's favorite toy. So yeah, that was the first thing we did. And by doing that, that allowed me to inspect all of the tires also at the same time. And we found out that maybe my tie rods on the front driver's side wheel are a little worn. I'm gonna inspect it right now and see if it's a tie rod or a bearing issue. But it wasn't enough of a concern to where I can't go to the event. The guy just said, hey, when you get back, probably wanna look at that. But yes, the next thing I'm gonna do, which you definitely need for a half mile event, is I'm gonna inspect all of my brakes and actually do a flush and get all new fluid in the brake system just to really make sure that we have brakes. I really like the Ford versus Ferrari movie, but one thing that movie taught me is check your brakes. Really check your brakes. Great movie, if you haven't seen it, go watch it. But yes, in order to do that, we gotta get it on the quick jacks. Let me show you guys how cool these are. 
Okay, so the way these work is they're hydraulic. So it comes with a hydraulic pump right here and it has cables. I don't have great cable management. It's somewhat better than my PC, but I don't have great cable management. There's these hoses and the hoses will allow the hydraulics in this thing to obviously lift up the vehicle. It's pretty straightforward. It's really convenient and I've only used them once and I'm already in love. So let me put down the camera and move them into place and I'll show you guys kind of how they work. All right, so I got them right about where I want them. Now we're gonna connect the hoses. You just make sure the hoses aren't gonna go under the vehicle. It's more important, I guess, when the vehicle's coming down because, well, it can't crush the hose already because car's on the floor. I don't know why I'm explaining that. Regardless, you gotta connect it with these quick connect hoses and uh, well, we're about to save ourselves like 30 minutes. The hoses are connected. Now I know what you might be thinking. Well, Drew, the hoses are gonna be in the way when you lift the vehicle. It's gonna be really annoying. You get to disconnect them, you'll see. Now, I'm gonna slide it under the vehicle, but first I'm gonna pick out which rubber pads I want. So I have a few here and I have a few in my cart, but they all have different purposes. And uh, well, we're gonna pick some out. For the Supra, I need to use the fatter block because uh, the side skirt, so. One on each corner, and then we raise the vehicle. All right, I got the quick jacks under the vehicle now with the pads. Now we simply press this button. Right about now, I like to go and just check every corner and make sure that we're good. So after checking the other side, we'll keep going up. Just like that, we're on the second locking point. The car is now, I believe, 24 inches in the air. We're gonna depress and let all of the pressure exit. And now we're good. Now we could have gone a little closer, but yeah, it's uh, closer than I would have liked it still. Anyways, now you can see I got the hoses disconnected. We now have all of the space we would ever want to do anything. I love these things. I usually hate doing clutch jobs, and after this event, I plan on doing one, but with the quick jacks now, it'll be much easier. Anyways, the first thing I'm gonna do is start taking off the wheels, and we're gonna inspect all the brakes. We'll start with the fronts. I already broke them loose, so let me just put on some gloves and then get out the impact. All right, so with all the wheels off, front brake pads look pretty thick. I don't know if you guys can see it on camera. The rear brake pads also look pretty thick. We got, um, I don't know if you guys can see it in there. Maybe, maybe not. Long story short, all the brake pads will look good. So what I'm gonna do is see if I have any brake fluid laying around. If not, I'll go buy some, like dot five maybe. And we'll flush all of the calipers, make sure that all of the fluid is A1. And uh, then I know for sure my brakes are solid. This is what I get for trying to stick my face around the rotor. Yeah, I touched it. Snorted some brake dust real quick. That's a healthy breakfast. Anyways, yeah, so... Uh, Brakes are looking good. Um, I'm also gonna inspect like axles and everything too, but uh, I'm really happy I don't have to order brake pads. Now you might be wondering, Drew, why are we gonna cut holes in the Supra? Cause I am serious about that. We are cutting some holes, but uh, it's not what you think, okay? I know I said the Swiss cheese thing and although a bunch of holes on this thing may or may not help it, science has yet to prove that. Uh, we are installing some hood pins. So this is something that I would recommend, especially if you're gonna do some high speed runs, but uh, any aftermarket hood is, not the most trustworthy. My Saibon one has been pretty solid, but I think there are some slight pressure cracks. You can maybe see it. There you go. And uh, that may or may not be caused to hood flood or anything like that, but just to be safe, we're gonna install some quick latch hood pins. And uh, these are just the simple circular ones. I didn't wanna get the, uh, I don't know, pear-shaped ones, because one, I already have pear-shaped ones on this car, but. I just like the quick and simple look of a circle. They remind me of nipples, and uh, I like nipples. Okay, so there they are. Here's some pins, maybe some Loctite, turbo lock, cool. And some instructions. Now I do remember installing those, and I hated it, so I'm not sure if I'm gonna like it on this either, but I've done it, and they look good, and they're straight, so with circles, there's less risk of making them crooked, thank God. But if you got some crooked nipples, it's okay. Okay, so here's the hood latch itself, and honestly, kinda wish these were out when that was out. I don't know if they were, maybe they just weren't as popular, but now they're super popular. But uh, yeah, these are really sleek, and like, you know, it's just, it ain't gonna stay, and it's gonna just scratch the wrap. 
you, you can you can picture it. It looks pretty good right there. It'll probably be like right there. So yeah, I'm going to start reading through the instructions and uh, maybe get one side done and then I'll walk you guys through the other side. Okay, so after reading the instructions, I figure it's probably best to just show you as I go. So first thing I did was find where I wanted to mount them. Now I was looking at some pre-drilled holes that I had already, but I don't like how close they are to the edge. I don't know if that's going to have some clearance issues with the nuts. So I found this area right here that I liked and I hit it with a punch. And then I took my measurement from this ridge right here all the way across and just by mere luck, it happened to be four inches on the dot. So then over here, I drew a line four inches and then I took the measurements before I drilled it of how center it was up to down. And I marked that as well and punched it. So you can see there's a little bit of a punch right there. And now I started drilling. Now I need to drill up to a 7 16 The instructions online were a different size and uh, I don't have a 7 16 it looks like. So I'm going to work with what I got and start drilling and uh, we're just going to slowly work our way up and make sure that it fits. But um, let me get the pins in and then from there we got to mark the hood, drill some more holes and have a whole lot of fun. So let's keep going. All right, so I got both pins installed um, and I'm using a level just to make sure that they are, well, level as, as, as good as possible. This one needed a little bit of finesse just prying it each way. Um, I'm gonna snug them up even more and then we're gonna mark the hood or put some tape on the hood and then lower it down and this little ball will just put a little bit of an indent in the tape and that will tell us where to drill. So let me do that. But so far it's looking really good. I don't think you need the 7 16 but that might come back and bite me in the ass. So now you could see we have them resting on the tape. So if we give it a little bit of a tap a little bit of a gentle tap, just massage it and then we lift it up. There's a little mark right there on both sides. Little mark. But that's all we need. Now we know where to drill. So I'm reading the instructions and I feel like there's an easier way to go about it. It wants me to drill a pilot hole and then drill it through the top as well and just kind of, not guess, but like it wants me to like align with the hood and drill, you know seems a little confusing so i'm going to drill the big bottom hole with the hole saw kit wherever it is and then i'm going to lower down the hood again mark the inside carbon shell and then drill through again i think to me that makes more sense i'm going to keep thinking about it and just like i don't know what i'm doing we're going to figure it out though and it's going to look good at the end <laughs> it'd be like that Okay, so now we have two beautiful holes. I'm going to clean up the insides and then put some sort of paint or something on the tips of the hood pins so uh, we can mark it. But yeah, looks good so far. I'm gonna wipe everything down too because it's getting really dusty in here. All right, so I used a little uh, ultra gray to mark it. I believe I see little dots. Yeah, I see it. So I'm going to go ahead and hit it with a tiny drill bit. And then we're going to go from the top after masking and hit it with the big boy. So uh, yeah, looks promising. That's scary. Okay, uh, let's throw in the pin. Let's see how bad. Okay, now the wrap's fine. Wrap's good. Wrap took that like a champ. Mm. All right, let's see. Okay, so this is what I wanted to see. We have play. We have enough play in there to where I can adjust them so I don't need to stress over making sure the center's perfect because we have enough play to where we can adjust them. So that's really nice to know. And already that looks really good. Like that looks great. I haven't even put on the nut yet. So let me get my nut off. Let me put my nuts all over it. And uh... All right, so here they are. They're locked right now, which is great. Uh, they look really good. I don't think anyone's going to be like, oh, they look a little off or anything like that because I can't even tell. I also don't have them locked in or adjusted yet. They're just 
placed in there loosely, finger tight. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all of the tweaking and adjusting done and I'll show you guys the finished product. But so far, I mean, it's not that bad of an insult. It's a little stressful, a little stressful install, but not that bad overall. These I will say are, are a lot more difficult because you have to line up a lot more shit that it's just left and right you don't have to make sure they're crooked or anything because they're fucking circles let me finish tweaking them and then we'll be done all right there we go got them installed they look really good uh, minor adjustments had to be made to this one for some odd reason i thought this one was going to be the easier one install this one i needed to slot the peg hole a little bit just to slide it a little bit back um this side went really easily and it was the side i did first and we got the hood nice and level with the fender same with this side nice and level so it's holding it in it's real solid now i mean i could shake the whole car just by pulling up on the fucking vents so super happy with it looks great it's low key um but they also work too so you know you can just press them in press them in and then pop the hood And it comes right up just a little bit more finessing but yes very easy sort of not really kind of but at the same time not it looks good though i will have to tighten up these nuts underneath and just see how it does but worked out good i'm happy anyways guys that is all i have for you for today we achieved what i needed to which was get the hood pins on do a lot of the pre-track prep I'll probably be live streaming a lot of the other boring stuff today, but very happy to get the hood pins installed and they look super sleek. Anyways, what do you think this car will do in the quarter and half mile? Um, I am bringing a draggy. I just ordered one up. So we'll have all of the numbers 60 to 160, half mile, quarter mile. I'm not going to launch it too hard. I'm not going to fucking try to pop a wheelie. It is on stock axles and shit. So with a soft launch, what are we thinking? Anyways, comment your thoughts down below, subscribe, and until next video, peace.